Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Today is a very special episode, and we're gonna jump right in after we thank today's sponsor, new sponsor, Simply Safe. So, Simply Safe offers incredibly reliable and secure home security to keep your home, and I guess in our case, workshop safe. Simply Safe was kind enough to send us a phenomenal kit, and we have it set up here at the new workshop to keep us a little safer. Simply Safe just updated their product line with devices that are half the size, are almost five times as fast, and can go almost double the range. With them, your home is professionally monitored 24-7, which means if anything happens, you can have the police call. They've got sensors to cover every single room and door. You get this beautiful base station and alarm keypad, sensors that tell you when doors are opened. You also even get water leakage sensors, which is pretty cool. The Simply Safe system was incredibly easy to install, and you can get 24-7 protection for as little as 50 cents a day with no contracts. If you lose power or Wi-Fi, the system will still work. I feel it is so important to have a great home security solution because at the end of the day, 100% of home invasions happen in the home. So you gotta be careful out there. There are crazy people in the world. Keep yourself protected with Simply Safe. Be sure, guys, at the end of the video to go check out Simply Safe at simplysafe.com forward slash forge. See all of their products. They're fantastic. We're super grateful to have them as a sponsor. Super grateful for you supporting our sponsors. Hey, Will. It's time for you to leave. It's okay, I needed a vacation anyway. I'm headed to Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Not The Workshop. Different workshop, we're down in Flo- not we. I'm down in Florida right now with my good friend, Steve Schwarzer. Steve is the longest continuously serving ABS master smith and a pioneer for a lot of the techniques that we use today. And I'm very, very excited to be down here working with him. We have some, some cool stuff planned. Yeah, yeah. we're working on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll bring you guys along with this process. Uh, start off with the steel and then uh, probably finish off the finished knife back at home in Montana where it's not so hot and I won't be sweating like a pig the whole time. That's right. We're yeah. getting weight off of him by the ounce. <laughs> That's just the way it works down here when we got 100 degree temperature and humidity. Yep, exactly. Nice. Very excited to bring you guys along. Let's get to it. So earlier today we were at a friend of Steve's who has a water jet machine and we cut out a couple of these, 13 of these little stegosauruses to be exact. And so this is the project. We're going to turn this into a mosaic Damascus steel using the canister technique that Steve came up with. Uh, and he came up with this back in the 80s? Back in the 80s, we doing powder work. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the first one to do powder work. There were other guys tinkering with canisters. I'm not sure when that started, but we're also going to add the secret sauce in this one. And uh, I'll, I'm going to show you a technique that I've been teaching for 20 years. It's been held very quietly to the side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and open it up on this video and then let Will spread the news. <laughs> That's awesome. So you guys you guys are in for a treat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get all of these little stegosauruses surface ground off and ready to weld up. Right. We're going to TIG weld together all of these feet here and then we'll put it inside of a canister and we'll fill it up the rest of the canister with a powdered metal. Uh, and then basically we're able to forge weld it together and work out our pattern with a little dinosaur in the steel. It's pretty cool. So we've got our three pieces cut up. We've got two for the lids and one for a plate that's going to slide down inside the canister. It's time to construct the canister, but we've got a little bit of special sauce we're going to add into it, and that's the thing that Steve has never shared on the internet before. It's a way that he gets the pattern to release from the outside can, and it's pretty cool. All right, uh, one of the reasons why this thing is set in here on a bias is it leaves me with the same amount of powder around the outside, and, and any powder canister, you got to have about a 30% reduction in order to get the interstice out of it those little tiny spaces between the powder before it solidifies. More even that space, the more pristine your image is. And that's why we set this like this, to get a, an even spacing. And we can tack that bad boy. All right, this is something. This is burnt stainless steel foil. Uh, like I said, it hadn't been a super secret, but it's been held pretty close. I've taught several close friends, like I said, since the 80s how to use this. Uh, you can almost not make anything stick to it. So I use it to line the can. So, and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm setting this on the, here just to get a rough measurement. So I'll get a little mark on, little mark on it like that. 
and that pretty much matches that. I'm going to weld the bottom in the can, and then I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to set this on top of it. So we've got the stainless steel in there now. Now we've got the, it's pushed out roughly against the sides of the canister. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're putting in it. It's 4600E with 2% nickel. Uh, the core, the dinosaurs themselves are cut out of uh, 1095 powder in and just to kind of get it started. This is how you make a canister peel without sticking, is using burned stainless steel foil. Not white out. Not white out. What I do is I get it primarily full, and you can see how it's starting to push out that can. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tapping that. But no matter how much you beat it and fram it and vibrate it, you still have to have a 30% reduction to get a solid. We just do it like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on that 100 ton press and press this and then we're going to cut a little slab of this stuff to lay on top of that. Packed it in pretty good. Yeah, I put a little bulge in it, but it won't hurt anything. Now come out when we start forging. <laughs> that powder as tight as it's going to get. I got the forge fired up. Steve threw a handle onto the billet. We're all ready to go ahead, throw it in the fire, get it heating up, and then we'll squish it in his horizontal press, which is very different from the press that we've got back at our shop. So it's day two working on the steel. We've got ourselves a big old slab of it. We can go ahead and cut ourselves off a slice, see how it looks. As you guys saw, the dinosaur is looking fantastic. It's time to throw another handle back on. Now we've chopped off the other side and work that down into some three quarter by three quarter square bar. got the dinosaurs worked up and now we're going to go ahead and do a florally looking mosaic pattern that's going to back the uh, the rest of the blade so we'll have three little dinosaurs in the actual blade and the rest will be this floral pattern we're going to work up right now. Steve got the billet tacked up. He's going to throw some stainless foil on the outsides and then plates on top of that so it can't get any oxygen in there whatsoever for a perfect weld.
put her in the vise and start peeling. Okay, here's where we're at. We took three layers of steel, pretty thick, forged it into a rounded C shape, split that, reforged, welded it back together. It's time to keep on with the pattern welding process to get this looking really good. We're gonna cut it up a couple more times and stack it and flip it to make it a really nice looking organic supporting material for the dinosaur tiles that are gonna be the centerpiece of the blade. got both pieces of steel in the fire now. We're gonna go ahead and size them down a little bit more. Now the plan with the mosaic is after we get it sized down a pretty good way using these dies, I'm gonna take off the top die and just turn it into a right triangle, which is gonna help an awful lot with keeping that pattern nice. It's gonna fit in well between those dinosaur blocks in the center. And then I'll leave some of that pattern square for the edge and tanning and stuff like that as well. But next step is gonna be forging everything down a little bit. Steve and I have been having just a blast in the shop so far. I'm sad that I have to be going home, but hopefully we'll get this thing finished up before that happens.
Well, we have ourselves a finished blade. It's looking absolutely incredible. Steve, you did an incredible job of teaching and, and helping me out on this project, and I really can't thank you enough for having me down here. It's been an absolute blast. I've learned all kinds of stuff. I've right. just learned a ton. Tell, tell everybody you know not to say anything about the secret <laughs> stuff. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, nice. No, I did, uh, did a beautiful piece of work, and uh, there you go. Yeah, absolute blast. Thank you, Steve. All right. You got it, man. Much appreciated. You I'll got it, brother. You, see you guys back in Montana. All right. See you out. <laughs> Well, it looks like you had a fantastic time. It was an absolute blast. Steve is just a wealth of knowledge, and he just has done some really, really incredible stuff, and he's been doing that stuff for so long. You can multiply our ages, combine them, square them. <laughs> this guy is like the real kind of pioneer of all of this. Exactly, so a lot of like the Damascus steel that you see us do, specifically the mosaic stuff, is something that Steve came up with a lot of those techniques and was really pushed a lot of those things and it's, it's crazy. really, really it's, incredible. What's most incredible to me is what an amazing community the bladesmithing community is <laughs> that, you know, people like him, individuals like him who have worked their whole lives to get this knowledge are happy to share it, not only with you, mm -hmm. but with all of you guys. So we're so grateful to Steve, so grateful for you. That was an awesome video, I loved it. So grateful for Steve for sharing all of this. He's got an Instagram that you can check out. It is Steve Schwarzer, check it out. Be sure to go follow him and also go and check out Simply Safe today's sponsor at simplysafe.com forward slash forge for helping make this possible. Thanks, Will. Of course. See bye you bye. guys on the next one. Ah, we said it at the same time. <gasps> bye bye. 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 Good, later. <laughs>